All right, what's up, guys? It's Flooded here. I'm um, just going to go over why I liked MICT when I found it, um, why I swung it. Going to go through all the steps, all the process of due diligence, and yeah, let's just get started. So first, obviously, like the way I find my swings is I run my screener, and um, I look for over oversold plays. And when I first found this, it was around this area right here. I'm going to switch to Weeble over in a second. When I first found this, it was this day right here, and I saw this hammer forming, and I kept it on watch since then, and I had been watching it trading sideways, you know, for a good week, and on this day was when I alerted it, was when I first took my initial swing position, and I'm going to go over exactly why. So, we can see on this daily chart, this is being treated by resistance. This is this is this line right here is acting by resist as resistance. So we can see it got rejected by these wicks. So it could never close above this line right here, which is around the 1.8 level. So on this day right here, let's go, what day was that? On the 7th. I'm going to go back to the 7th on the one minute chart. So what, what I was going over was the daily chart. Um, now we're on the one minute chart. This is the intraday. This is September 7th, you know, and initially the, I was, I've been watching this, you know, and initially you could see these volume slaps moved it all the way to 1.88. And I, this is when we took our entry, or I believe somewhere around here. And the reason why I took my entry was because I was seeing lots of slaps and lots of bids holding it up. So I knew they weren't going to let this fall down under this, this level. So I added here and you could see I made a move to two, almost $2 that same day. And in after hours, pre market had a bit of action, but yeah, that's basically going over the chart. Yeah, this is the reason it spiked over this resistance. And this is the first time I've seen it go over this resistance, you know, with good momentum, with good volume and with very good bids. You know, there was like 300 K on the bid for like two different prices and they would, they really wanted this to hold up and yeah, fast forward to today. To, 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 uh, to today, um, we took our entry around 1.88, sold at 2.22. Uh, very good swing. Uh, but now I'm about to go over the uh, fundamentals. But yeah, let me know if you guys have any questions on the chart. You know, this was acting as resistance. I really like this hammer. I've been watching it since then. I wish I took an entry here, but you know, it's whatever. Um, yeah, so that's why we entered MICT at that range. But yeah. Um, okay, so first thing usually I do when I'm doing due diligence is I'm on Finviz. I scroll down and I start reading these. I want to see, I want to find something important, a catalyst, something that's coming up later in the future, something that I can look forward to along with a good chart. So we've already verified that MICT has a good chart. Now I'm, I want a catalyst. I want something to look forward to. And if I click this link right here, <clears throat> read the title. MICT reports 50% quarter over quarter growth in insurance revenues and prepares for Magpie stock trading app launch. So this 50% quarter over quarter is talking about earnings. So this tells me right here that it has good that it had good good earnings. And now the really important about to, part about this title is prepares for Magpie stock trading app launch. That's really what like what really interested me because that's a catalyst. I can just see it right there and then. That's a really good catalyst. And um, they reported earnings around August 16. Let's see what the stock did around August 16. So yeah, I think just a lot of people sold into earnings. You know, a lot of people didn't want to hold their position into earnings, even though it was really good earnings. They beat and yeah, sometimes it, that just happens. But that's also bullish for me that there were good earnings and you know. Um, but yeah, sometimes even if it's good earnings, Stock won't, won't specifically react in a good way. And this is an example of that. But um, we can go through and if you start reading over this, insurance business revenues increased 50%, revenues increased 38%, great earnings. Boom. Currently in final stages of testing for Magpie stock trading platform in preparation for full launch mid-September. Now the thing about MICT is I remember every time they've released news, we've seen a big reaction on the chart. And this thing moves really nicely to news. And they just announced they just announced the catalyst for mid-September. And 
yeah, this is just a really good catalyst. That's initially I was waiting for this news and I still am. I still have a pretty good position in my main account. But the reason I announced an exit on the one to 10 K small account was because I just didn't want to risk anything. It was a good almost 20% return, but I'm still holding a good chunk on my main account. I'm still waiting for this for them to announce it. But yeah, so in final stages for full permission mid-September, that's around September 15, which is in a couple of days, maybe all the way up to September 20. Uh, commodities trading platform anticipated to launch by end of September. Um, MICT board. Okay, MICT board approved 60 million capitalization of MAGPI securities from the company's funds to finance the launch and growth of the stock trading platform. So they're really bullish about this. They want to push this. They want to go crazy with this. And this just tells you that right there. So it's a really good catalyst. Let's see if we can find another one. Um, the Casper, okay. Okay, he's just talking about the earnings. CEO. Okay, we are eagerly ex awaiting the launch of Magpie stock trading app, which has reached the final stages of testing and now anticipated to launch mid-September. So now they're saying the mid-September part again. Successful business around our economy. So they're really bullish about this. We're expecting to launch it by end of September. That's the commodities part. Partnering with Shanghai. Okay. Okay. So that's a really good catalyst. Write that down somewhere September, mid-September. Now, let's see if we can find another one. Right here. I'm going to zoom in for those shit. My bad, guys. But yeah, I'm in a bit more. Now, we just went over this part. We are eagerly awaiting for the launch of Magpie. Now anticipated to launch in mid-September. So that's a very good catalyst right there. Another important part of our insurance business growth strategy is to secure more licenses at a local level, which alongside our development of strategic partnership and alliances in China enables us to penetrate the higher margin of B2, B2, B2C market more quickly. Leverage relationships with key partners. So that's another catalyst right there. They want to grow. They want to grow their business. They want to secure more licenses at a local level. So that's also another catalyst. They're going to try to do some things that they're going to announce, obviously, to public shareholders that they're doing to secure more licenses. But the main, main catalyst that we want is Magpie. And that's anticipated to release mid-September. We can play the run-up to Magpie, uh, Magpie release, which we did. You know, we played the run-up. We bought a couple days ago, like three days ago. And we played the run-up and we sold it before it was even announced. Or you could wait until until um, until they actually release the news. But yeah, okay. Um, next, let's ho head over to Yahoo Finance. I'm going to zoom out. And so let's just say on Yahoo Finance, search up any tick you want. Let's search up MICT, probably the one of the best websites for finances. Uh, let's go to statistics and let's scroll all the way down to balance sheet. Now, let's look at their total cash versus their total debt. Um, give me a second. Okay. Um, okay. Total cash is 114 million. Total debt is 2 million. So just compare that. That's very, very good. That's exactly what we want to see. They don't have a lot of debt compared to how much cash that they have at the moment. Um, the revenue is also pretty good, 22 million. And with the Magpie, we can expect to see the revenue going up, and we'll definitely hear them say something about that. But yeah. Um, okay. Um, <clears throat> okay, let's go over Market Beat. So. Okay, so MarketBeat's definitely my favorite website for insider trades, institutional trades, things like that. So pretty much Finviz, Yahoo Finance, MarketBeat, and Webull, of course, or any charting platform. But let's go over their insider buying and selling activity. So the most recent insider trade was a CEO who bought 6 million shares at 1.41. Total transaction cost was 8.5 million. And you can see that here, it shows you basically how many shares were bought and sold in every quarter of every year. So 2021, quarter one, zero. Quarter two, 8.5 million bought. And quarter three, nothing yet. But that, that just shows you, you can see like 
this helps you determine like are insiders selling or buying like what if they're all dumping you know that should tell you something what if they're all loading up massively that should also tell you something and let me tell you that six million shares is not a small amount for a company like this it's a, it's a pretty bit decent chunk um but yeah now let's go over to institutional ownership this is this tells you right here institutions so insiders the other one that we were going over was the insiders this is talking about the institutions trades of mict so you could tell us quarter three 1.74 mil bot just massive buys recently for the past four quarters quarter three of last year quarter four of last year quarter one of this year quarter two of this year big big buys and if you scroll down a bit you can see what institutions are loading this up uh, marshall watt waste llp um, they have 643,000 shares and they, on this transaction right here, they changed their position size by 1,117.4%. Morgan Stanley, 1.14, they changed their position size by 4%. Wells Fargo and then etc. Ton of buys except for this sell right here, Citadel. But yeah, just looking at this, extremely bullish. So the, I, I'm not looking at this right now, but this is how, like, when I was doing my due diligence last week to get in, this is how, this is what I was going through. Like, these are why I invested or I bought in for a trade at 1.88 last week. Um, But let's take a look at earnings. You could see a steady uptrend right here. Just a very good uptrend and a miss this past quarter. But yeah, if we go to Yahoo Finance as well, let's search up MICT. It's probably really nice. I like this about it just simplifies the earnings for you. It tells you, you know, if they beat. So obviously red is a miss and the estimate. But they have beat three times and they just missed the most recent one. And this told me like it's a safe swing because earnings are coming up a month from now or two. And, you know, that gives us time, you know, in case they don't release their stock trading up. You know, that gives us time. Um, let me see. And if we scroll down a bit, we can see analyst price target average is 425. There's only one upgrades and McAllis recommendation rating by, um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Let me know if you have any, oh yeah, oh shit. Um, I almost forgot. Okay. Let me go over the uh, one to 10 K challenge. So this is basically where I'm trying to turn 1000 into 10,000 and we had a ton of shit luck at the beginning we started off with new we took an l on that 120 dollars dss was our second play we took an l on that for like 50 dollars i was very bullish on this but i was very bullish but let me show you guys what happened with dss so this is what we were playing we were trying to play this right here so i faked us out i bought the day before i bought around the wait what did I let me check 625 so i bought this day because i knew the next day looking at the volume and everything else i knew the next day was going to open up above this um this triangle and you know it did that and it faked us out because it broke under and this is where i stopped out i stopped out and it just downtrended for a while massive massive downtrend But uh, yeah, um, what else to say? But yeah, if you guys are new or something, you guys can always, um, you guys can always just look, look through, look through the server. I had a ton of due diligence on DSS. I was really confident in it, but it just didn't turn out the way I wanted it to. And that's fine. But yeah, that, that was another L on the challenge account. You know, I really like this, uh, this ascending triangle. Right here, I really liked how I was about to open up, but they faked us out and it dumped. But that's okay. We cut our losses quickly. Obviously, we don't we don't bag hold. Um, one seventy three. What was okay? So then we started with SMED. This is when I looked. You know, we we're starting to do better and better. Uh, we cut gains. The account was at nine fifty two after SMED, and. We had NM after, which was a really good win. We had 
AME, AEMD, which was also a really good win. SQBG, also a really good win. MICT, also a really good win. So we've been on a hot streak. And the account's almost at 1600 now. I really I want to try to get it to at least 5k before end of year. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, looking for a new swing now. Let's try to find something similar to MICT. But yeah. That's pretty much it. If you guys have any questions, let me know. Oh, yeah. Also, before I forget. Okay. So, I see, like, a lot of you guys aren't even using all the premium channels, you know. But look. So, you have MM Butler right here. Very useful. You can DM it. Um, Ask Flutter. Just ask me any questions you want. Chart help. Just put in any, um, any charts you're having trouble with. Portfolio review. All the tickers. I don't really like any of these channels except for pre market news. Pre market news is really cool in my opinion. I like this one. But websites I use go through this. Premium education, watch all of these. Oh, I'm about to upload some more after tonight or tomorrow. Um, daily watch list. This is very good. Super cool. You just click it and it has a whole PDF explaining everything. It's awesome. I love it. And equity watch list, trade layout, options watch list, months watch list, plays recap. Okay. Alert rules. This is where you could sign up for alerts. Um, long term alerts. Very cool. One of my most favorite channels. Um, large cap alerts. 1 to 10K. Oh yeah, we're about to upload this via watches. We're working on something right now. But yeah, that wraps it. There's traded text. I really like the um where is it? Probably the block trades and the insider trades. Very useful. The block trades on low on uh, low floats can be awesome. But yeah. Uh, make sure you guys are joining the live trading every morning. I was a bit sick this morning. Couldn't be much. Uh, couldn't be active much, but I'll try to make it tomorrow. And yeah, hope you guys have rest of, a good rest of the day. We're about to go live in like an hour. If you're watching this video, um, to go over the daily runners. Um, but yeah, have a good day. Bye bye.